Hey, this is Darren from Property Prosperity. And uh, you probably know by now that Trump, Trump is now the President of the United States. If you listen to my uh, talk yesterday where I explained what would happen if Trump became a president, um, I gave you a bit of a prediction of these are the things that are actually going to happen. Uh, the first thing I said that was specifically what I was talking about was the Australian property market. And so what I explained was that if Trump became president, that because he's sort of quite uncertain, because he doesn't come from a political system, which rightly or wrongly, or hey, Paul, thanks for joining. So because he come, doesn't come from the political system, no one really knows what he stands for. No one's really seen what's going to happen in the past. And also because he doesn't come from the establishment within the Republican Party, then basically he can do whatever the hell he wants. And so he's got plenty of money, so he's not doing it for the money. So the, the thing is with this is no one really has a strong grasp of his motives and why he's actually doing it. And the problem also is he often his statements conflict and he says one thing and then says totally the opposite the next day. And likewise, we've seen straight away once he's been elected that he's, um, you know, obviously he was going to put Hillary Clinton in jail. And then he's come back out and he's, in his acceptance speech, he said how awesome Hillary Clinton is and what an amazing job she's done for the country. So that's potentially could may mean things are better or could mean things are worse. And I suppose in reality, we don't really know what's going to happen. But one thing we do know is there's a degree of uncertainty. And what I explained when you had listened to my video last night was that uncertainty means that the markets are, don't really know what to, to, to predict, I suppose. They don't know what's actually going to happen. So what that means is the market's going to be all over the place. If people are trying to gauge where things are at, so we're more likely to have ups and downs, things happening quite quickly. And what happens when you have uncertainty, though, people go to things which are more certain. So I explained to you that um, one of the things that's going to happen is people are probably going to go out there and buy into gold, which is straight away the gold price has gone up. Um, the next thing that's going to happen is people are going to go to currencies which they feel a bit more secure than other currencies. So um, they feel the US dollar is a more secure currency than some of the other currencies around. So straight away, we've seen the Australian dollar fall and the US dollar go up as well. Um, and then the other thing we're going to find people do is they're probably going to buy into a lot more secure investments. So they're going to take their money out of the share market because we're not actually sure what's going to happen with, with businesses around the world. And so they're going to more likely put their money in something called bonds, which is essentially um, government-backed securities. So that means the government's backing it. So you can put your money in there. You get a lot lower return, but because it's backed by the government, it's more likely to happen, um, get a, you know, get your money back. Essentially, you're not taking as much risk. So that's essentially what's happening. We found the gold price has gone down. We found the Australian dollar has gone down. And we've found that um, people are putting their money into bonds instead. The next thing to try and work out what's going to happen is what, what effect that's going to have in the Australian property market. So if you listen to my talk last night, I sort of explained that uncertainty, you know, people don't like uncertainty. They like, they like to know what's going to happen. And so because we've got this uncertainty, then the markets that are particularly volatile or, or you know, either in big booms or big busts, they're going to have the greatest effect. And so I explained to you in Adelaide, it's quite a conservative market. We don't have a big booms and big busts. We just put along over time. Historically, over the last you know, five years, we haven't done that much. We're probably, if you look at it on the scheme of things, we're probably relatively undervalued compared to other states within Australia. So it's probably not going to have a few huge effect on the Adelaide property market. But if you look at other states, which are a bit more overheated, which are relying on people's optimism, um, people's optimism may be dented to a degree. And so you're looking at markets like the Sydney market or the Melbourne market, or even, you know, some, ton, some degree, you know, the, the Brisbane market then you probably would expect it to cool off a bit um, or cool off quite a bit, depending on people's degree of uncertainty and how much they're less likely to invest in property because of it. You can, you can probably imagine, you know, property is a lot harder prop, um, market to get into and out, to, out of. So if the Trump issue resolves relatively quickly, then, you know, people might not go out there and start selling their properties because of it. Or, um, but they may not buy a property because of it. And so, again, that present, prevents the market going up as quickly as it otherwise would go up. And so, um, so I probably, my advice to you last night is the same as my advice to you today is it's all about the short term versus the long term. In the short term, you know, people don't know what's happening. There's a degree of uncertainty. And if people are concerned and not sure what's going to happen, then essentially that's people being pessimistic. And, and that usually translates into people thinking, you know, maybe the prices might go down. And the thing is, if people think the prices might go down, they probably are going to go down. And so likewise, if people think the prices are going to go up, then the prices will go up. So 
really in this environment where there's this high degree of uncertainty, most people are going to be quite conservative and most people are going to say, well, I'll err on the side of caution and maybe things will go down. And if, as soon as people start saying that, then the market's going to go down. So the thing to understand that that's only a short term phenomena. It's not going to um, really affect the long term. At the end of the day, the long term is based on supply and demand. And so if there's lots of demand to, to live in a particular area or invest in a particular area, then there's not much supply of properties within that area, then the market's going to go up. And if there's lots of supply and not much demand, then likely the market's going to go down or at least not go up as quickly as it otherwise would. So good thing, good news and bad news. So the bad news is, yeah, we're in for a bit of a roller coaster in the short term because who knows what's going to happen in the long term is not really going to make a huge amount of difference. Um, so we can just sit back and write it out. There is a potential if you do want to take a bit of a punt, there is a potential to take advantage of this. Um, it's likely the market will probably go down in the, the short to medium term, um, in particularly in those overinflated markets that I talked about. Um, so if you want to take a punt and get out there and buy when the market's going back down. You know, generally they talk about trying to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. So if you can see the market going down, it might be the opportunity for you to be able to get into the market. Saying that somewhere like Adelaide where the market's relatively cooled off anyway, not a lot of happening. So it's quite um, conservative. So you probably same old, same old, most probably as far as Adelaide goes. So hopefully it's made sense and hopefully you're, either more freaked out or more relaxed, depending on your point of view. And uh, yeah, if you like what I had to say, click on the like button. If you haven't liked what I had to say, still click on the like button because I really appreciate it. And if you've got a comment or you've got something, your perspective of what you think might happen to the Adelaide property market, I'd love to hear about it. Put a comment in the comment box. And yeah, if you want me to chat about something else, feel free to put a comment in there and I'm happy to chat about something else in a future episode. Thanks guys. Look forward to talking to you in a future episode. Bye for now.